Hello and welcome to Wine Baron. This is episode 8 and in this episode we're going to start off by doing our morning routine. Basically that's uh, checking things, selling things and replenishing things. <laughs> Basically we do that every morning. We'll just go through it quickly and have a look and see what we've got. So first thing, nearly forgot, let's go and check on the vines. They should be okay. We're also going to finish cutting the grass today. Or oh, we're going to cut the grass between the vines, should I say, today. We'll go through that, show you how we do that. Forgot, forgot about my own one-way system again. <laughs> I was just going to go and check to see what's what's happening here. We should still have grapes. We might replenish that during the course of the day sometime. Might not be on camera, but still. Let's jump in. Go and see how much we've got in there. We'll see if we've got anything to collect. I'm pretty sure we will have. pop on down quickly and go and have a look at the trees. Still not much growth shown, but they are growing. It's going to be a little while before those are anywhere near ready to be harvested. It's another thing that we will be replenishing during the course of... what are we in? We're in June. And that is... Um, trees we'll have to put more trees into the into the sawmill. Right, that's good. I don't know why I collected that on the front. Should have just reversed in and loaded it up. In any case we'll get that sorted out. We just need to go and collect all our our pallets of wood planks or wood beams, planks and long planks. Get that into the pallet factory. So we are keeping the the winery fully stocked with pallets. We'll be able to start selling some pallets as well in the near future. But right now we'll just keep our winery stocked up. I don't want to cut down too many trees. They're not really much... The, the real problem with the trees that we're cutting at the moment is that they don't give... They only give maybe between one and two thousand litres of wood. Um, and the branches they have to be cut off, they don't strip off like the like the forest trees do. So a bit of a pickle. But we'll get enough in here just to keep us supplied in pellets for now. We start making money with from the pellets really when we get the when we get to harvest from the forest. Might be a good idea to plant another forest somewhere else in the next couple of months so that we can have some continued supply. But we'll check that out over time. Let's get these all in. That's looking good. Go and get the uh, normal planks in. I think we must probably gonna end up having an oversupply of planks. That's not too bad. That not too bad and a problem to have because we get some extra income from that. Glad to see we've got a bit of 
we've got three pallets of wood beams. I was a bit worried that the production of wood beans, beans, <laughs> wood beams, would not keep up. But we'll see. For some reason, we dropped the pallets there them up on their sides. Well, it does. So I thought I might have to put them down. But it uh, took it straight off the, off the bag handler. We'll just go through this um, for this episode. In the future we will uh, I'll probably not show this. It's pretty routine. But I did want to go kind of through the basic routine that we that we do every day. Just to um, I like to do that on most series quite soon, quite early on, once we've got things happening just to because daily routine does take a bit of time but it's pretty much the same every time so I tend not to show a lot of it unless something happens or something along those lines there we go that's that pretty much done once we get that in and then it's just the wood beams and this job is done These should pick up nice and easily. Oops, provided you don't drive into them. <laughs> the only thing with this bag handler is you just got to make sure you're in the right position to be able to pick up more than one load. And it's fairly quick. It's not, not like we're going to have hundreds of pallets to move from here into the pallet factory, especially if we do it every day. I haven't really been keeping an eye on the consumption, but it looks like uh, what we are supplying now will keep us going. It's just a question of, it's more a question of keeping the trees supplied to the actual sawmill. Yeah, don't have any trees in there now. Or do we? No, it doesn't look like it. Yep, yeah, no wood. So we'll have to go and uh, lease that uh, the tree harvester. We'll do that during the course of the day as well. We might only get to that in the next episode, showing it uh, because there is a bit of a, a bit of a idea festering in my mind about clearing some space out to um, to put in some uh, holiday accommodation particularly because we've got the winery people like to come in and have a look at all the production that we do and of course in the winter time we've got the mountains behind us so might be people might want to come up and uh, have access to the mountain for skiing and such like but that will develop over time all right let's get this parked off then i think we need to go and check it out on the sheep see how they do it's going to be interesting to see how much um, how much grass we eventually get off that wine of the uh, vine field. So I think I'm going to put the back weight down the side here just so that it's easy access. There we go. Just completely disregarded my one-way system again. 
Alright, let's get on out down to the sheep and see what they do. I find this not very picturesque. I do enjoy driving around it. The other thing is I do like the raggedness of this free-range uh, sheep pasture, if you want to call it that. Even though I've built roads around it, but I've left the roads still rough, rough and ready. Not impossible, but just rough and ready. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, they're still well stocked. But if all starting to be produced, we'll, we'll let it get up to almost a pellet and then we'll uh, see where we're going to sell it. Might put in a clothing factory or something. We'll see. It'll also depend how the money is going, of course. At this stage, we're not getting much income. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the wool and eventually clothing, if we do get to that, will bridge the finances and actually finance the wine operation. Especially now in the startup phases. I think we'll eventually make quite a bit of money from from the tourism once we get the uh, holiday accommodation built. Right, let's get these produced wine, well, our production of wine and grape juice loaded. Just put that onto auto load. Reverse it in. I have been using the uh, small beast to do this much easier actually. This tractor I found is a little bit un. Well, the area is just a little bit small. It's not impossible, but um, yeah, it's just a little bit more. It's just not as easy as using the beast. So we'll get back to that in the future. So even if it's just for loading, we'll take it down to the sale point, to the farm shop in town. Once we've uh, once we've loaded it up. Right, head off into town and we'll catch you there. Here we are, just about at the farm shop. Let's see how much we get for this. It's not as lucrative as I thought it was going to be, to be honest. That's why we've had to kind of think on our feet a little bit and diversify out a little bit. Well, it's not too bad. There's still, still more stock here. Just not quite in the trigger areas properly. Us turning over, we do have to service that big loan that we've got for for um, building the, um, the pellet factory. But we'll worry about that once the income starts coming in. As long as we can service the repayments and the interest. Okay for now. Right, let's head on back up to the farm. I think there's a couple of boxes of pellets still to be cleared up from the projections before we put it onto onto distributing. Let's gonna have a look and see. I think we'll just um, hand load these to 
save the issue of uh, put it onto auto load so we can just take it out move them out and then they'll auto load from from outside there we go I'm sure we'll get a little bit faster than that I'm just going to sell these, not going to be much money. 70 euros somewhere around there. Oh, that's it all loaded up. We'll leave the factory to continue to produce. Does have it does have stock, so we do need to get trees into the sawmill to get some stock for the next month. Right. Let's jump in here. Get in the small tractor. Go and replenish some grapes. We'll just add another trailer load in. Should keep us going for the next month. Still a few months that we have to bridge before the first harvest of grapes come in. That's going to be the next mile, a really big milestone for our operation here. Is um, finding out how much. Uh, how much grapes, or what the production of grapes is from the vineyard that we've planted. And if it is sufficient to keep us going for until the next harvest, then we may not need to plant the other fields and we can uh, utilize that for something else. Not sure where this area really lends itself to olive production, but it might be interesting to look at that. If not, maybe some fruit trees or something like that. Right, let's just get this in. The nice thing is that even though I do think I must probably built that silo in the wrong place, I think it should have been in this complex. Um, it's not really that far to transport. Of course once we've got fresh grapes we'll, uh, we'll fill up the production facility completely first before storing. Shouldn't take too long to load this up. That's all that done. Take it back, go and get this all parked up. Right, let's go and get some tree production started. We'll lease, th lease that. It is pretty expensive. I think in the future we might be doing some hand, hand cutting. Get a trailer that's going to be cheaper than leasing this every time. I think once the factory, once we've got the forest going. Um, we'll invest in a, in a decent, uh, not that this is not decent, but a more efficient logging system. One of those big tree harvesters will invest in that, maybe even have to take a loan. Right, so this is the area that, here that I want to develop into the holiday area. So I want to leave, kind of leave the trees on the outside. Cut down the trees on the inside to so leave maybe a, a row of trees on the outside just to build the accommodations into. Just make a bit of an entrance way. We'll do it at a bit of an angle. 
I think that's pretty much what we'll do is we'll just uh, clear this out. It's relatively flat, so we should be able to build a nice little uh, tourist area here. Maybe even put in a little farm shop or something like that there so that guys don't have to traipse into town to buy product. But we'll, we'll do that as we go along. Have it ready for the next summer months. Maybe even for winter. Don't think it'll make a lot of money in the winter until people get to know us as a bit of a ski destination. Although not resort. Right, let's get this all the way down to the... It's a bit slow travelling down there. I suppose we should put these onto trailers, but... It's looking good. It's not really that far. We'll just do this one, drop these off. Once we've dropped these off, we'll uh, do the rest off camera. I think you've seen enough of this operation so far. We'll show it every now and again, especially if we change the modus operandi. Let's look up on the in internet and on YouTube or something like that to see what this machine actually does. Carry the trees around, it just seems to be not really well, I didn't say physically possible, but I would imagine they don't travel too far with them. It's probably just to get them out into work area or something like that. certainly don't think they're using it like a delivery vehicle as I am here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just get these offloaded and then get on to something else. I think I did show you how we drag these in, didn't I? In the last, well, one of the earlier episodes. Here that goes, all creaky. Let's get going with the with working in between the um, the vines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself a small windrower. We're just going to click grass and we'll feel a uh, field. We'll feed grass to the sheep. So I think we should be able to mow and windrow at the same time. So we get the windrow on the back mow on the front and then we'll go and get start in that we'll do a couple of rows to show you how it's done we'll do the rest off camera get back to you once it's finished it's probably in the next episode it's going to take a while yeah grape producing grapes is not a it's not a quick business as is forestry, so this whole operation is really a lot of uh, hurry up and wait. Yeah. Get everything established and we've got to wait for them to grow, especially the trees. But that's the nature of it, that's the way it should be. Right, so here we go. Let's see, oof, crash into the vines. So as I thought, it doesn't actually cut the grass around the vines, which is nice. I was a bit worried that that might create a bit of a problem, but it doesn't. It looks like we're going to have to do up and down between each, each vine. So they could have been planted slightly closer together. I'd rather have them a little bit further apart and easier to work. So 
want to try and get them to the centre, so it really should have been starting from the bottom. We'll do that the next time round, if I remember, of course. <laughs> so we do it from the bottom, then it would either way, so we'll be, we'll be um, wandering to the centre of the of the of the gap between the vines. Just make it easier for the baler to get in. I think the harvest should be fairly good. Of course the area to harvest is nowhere near what it would be if we would just had this as a pure grass field. But yeah, the swaths look reasonably stacked, as they say. This is the one where we narrow down a bit. Yeah, we'll have to kind of do the headlands afterwards and just tidy it up around the edges. I think this works fairly well. It's going to be slightly slower going, going up and down each time, but we'll get used to it. I have to do it twice a year, so I would say. Hopefully, once our clothing production is up and running, it'll be lucrative. So this byproduct will actually uh, be producing quite a bit of money. Yeah, it's not too bad at all actually. As we go further down, it does narrow off. Though there's a couple of places where we would have to uh, We did do a bit more around the edges, thinking of the sort of elbow area of this field. Not quite sure you know what I mean by that, but <laughs> basically this, this is an L-shaped field, so in the angle of the area, or the area where the angle is, where we change from sort of longer fields to short, uh, longer vines to shorter vines. It's a bit of extra space to, uh, over there. Not too upset about that because it will just up the grass yield a little bit. Right, so that's that operation done. And uh, just get this done. We'll go and get the baler out. Get it baled up. And we'll get that uh, through to the uh, to the sheep area, and we'll go and offload it there. Start building up a bit of stock for the a bit of feed for the sheep. Get that unloaded, unloaded, <laughs> unfolded as we go along. Here we go. Interesting to see if we get if we get more than. Five bales out of the slot it be we'll show we'll be getting reasonable we'll end up with a reasonable amount of bales then. Maybe somewhere between thirty and forty bales from the field which should keep us going. We've only got two we'll, we've only got a hundred sheep at the wall. We've only got what have we got? Forty plus about eighty odd sheep uh, at the moment, so that will reproduce pretty quickly, so it'll be within a year we'll have sort of close to 200 sheep producing wool, so it's not a huge herd, but it's big enough I think to to make a reasonable income, or side income side hustle if you want to call it that. I wouldn't call clothing production exactly a hustle, but we were there four, five, let's probably get six 
maybe seven. I don't know if there's one off loaded further down here. Yeah, there are a couple there. Well, I don't know. How many are we going to get? Three, four, five. Nine. Very happy with that. Yeah, I reckon we should definitely get between. Well, close to, if not over, 40 bales of that field. Brilliant. Right, let's go and buy a bale loader. So we can get that uh, loaded up. I think this is quite nice because it's a uh, fairly narrow, fairly short, so easy to handle and pretty cheap. It only takes about 12 bales at a time, but we don't have far to travel, so a little bit of shuttling not going to be too much of a problem. It'll be interesting to see um, if it would be worthwhile, because we've got so much land that it's been unutilized, to have these pockets of uh, these little sheep ranches dotted around the place amongst the forests. Let's just see if it'll pick it up over the boat. No, it won't. I think there should be some some bales at the bottom yet to collect. Brilliant. Yes, the only thing is that uh, you kind of have to, you limit it to um, loading in the rows <laughs> because it won't load across there. Well, it might if it was close enough, but uh, it's the way it would be. Not too much of a problem, especially with this little loader. Oof. Let's drive over the bale. You have to feed that one first. No way we no way we're gonna recognise it though, is it? <laughs> there we go, eight. Nine bells. Let's get onto the uh, sheep and we can offload these into the um, into the barn that we in the open open sided barn that we built up there. Should be a good place to store the store the stock. I think that'll be its main function. Would be uh, to house the bales. At the moment, we've got the water tank in there, but we can build another shelter for that, or we'll even take it back to the farm every time. Put it in our normal sheds. We've got plenty of place there to store it. It's not that far away. Let's get this all floated. Let's try and get closer to the poles on the inside so we can push it across as far as we can with the auto or, auto unload now or the unload assistant on. We should, we should be able to get some nice fairly tidy stacks, haystacks in here. We go take it as far across as possible. We can offload it there. And that's it done. I think that's where we're going to end this episode. Thank you so much for watching. We'll finish off the grass and the trees off camera and we'll see you in July. Thank you so much for watching. Cheerio.